My name is Josh Gradson. I'm the Economic Development Director for the Village of Elk Grove. I want to thank everyone for coming this morning. I know it's early. We're not going to keep you too long. But we just want to provide an opportunity for the new businesses that moved into the village or even expanded to the village recently to come and meet uh, the department heads and our elected officials. And really, this is for you to ask questions and get information about the new business in the village. But before we get started, why don't we just go around the room and everyone can introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Matt Rowan. I'm the Deputy Village Manager. Uh, my name is Isaac Mongren, and uh, I'm with On Call Properties. Uh, I'm uh, also from On Call Properties. I'm James Chung. I'm Steve Shin from Boss Trading, VOSS. Roberto Menares from Boss Trading. <coughs> Judy Keegan, I'm the village clerk. Sam Lacani from Imaginary. Frank Rosella, owner of the Rosella Group. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sherilyn Lim. I'm the president of the Elk Grove Chamber. Jennifer Jacobson, Candy Keenans. Jan Schnagel, play it again, Jan's resale shop. Good morning, I'm Linda Mata with the IDI Skin Shop and Illinois Dermatology Institute. I'm Dave Sheffy from Topco Associates. I'm Jamie Cheesebro with the Elk Grove Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> I'm Debbie Handler with Elk Grove Bowl. Nancy Zemanik, uh, Elk Grove Village Trustee. Patty Mealman from Chairtech. Rosina DeFrenza with Rocco Minos, past chair for the Elk Grove Chamber. I'm Jim P. Dry, Village Trustee. Well, first off, we welcome everyone that's here, whether a new business, a business been here for a while, or of course our chamber members and so on, and of course our staff that does a phenomenal job. We want to let you know that we are striving, our ultimate goal is to be the most business-friendly community in the country. We already know that we're the biggest. We now want to be the friendliest. We want to reach out to you any way we can. Uh, Josh does a phenomenal job on behalf of the community, but we want to let you know that we're accessible, and we're here to work with you. Most of us are business people here. I own a business here in the village. Actually, it's the oldest continuous business here in Elk Grove. We've been here before, and even probably knew what Elk Grove was. Um, and so I bring a unique perspective as mayor, and the fact that I not only think of it as a elected official, but also look at it as what's the impact on the business community when we do things. We understand that our community is business oriented. We know that the business community is our success, if the business community fails, the village will ultimately <coughs> fail too. Um, there's an old joke in the village, but it's very true that every day when we wake up, we should look to the east toward the business park and bow three times. Because you are our golden goose, which allows us to have the finest schools around, park district, library, and village government. Our village government is second to none. We're nationally credited in all of our departments and do a phenomenal job. But it takes economic backing to be able to do that. And it's because of the business group that we can do that and we're proud of it. By the same token, you should expect that high quality back as a business owner or a business employee here in Elk Grove Village. And we'll make sure we give it to you. Our department heads, our police department, fire chief, our public works, engineering, all the administration staff are here to work with you and help you. Now, we can't always say yes to you. But I tell people all the time, there's two ways we work with you. One time we have to say no to you, we can walk up and go, boom, nope, can't do it, get out of here. The other way to do it is go up to you and say, you know what, we can't do it that way, but here's a way we can help you get the same goal that you want to achieve by working together with us to get there. This way is better for the community as a whole, but also helps your business. That's the attitude we need to have. We want to be business friendly, we want to work with you. When you walk in the village hall today, it doesn't look like most other village halls. That's because we are a business-oriented community. We know how to work with you, we know how to help you. Our people have expertise in areas that you may not have thought of. You may have a contractor working with you. Well, he may do it the old-fashioned way, but our experts um, in Mary's department or Vito's department say, well, you know what, there's another way you can do this that achieves your goal, but maybe less expensive for you, and also works with the neighboring businesses. Remember, we've got 3,500 companies doing business out growth. We got a lot of neighbors that we want to make sure we work jointly with and in concert with, not doing something that's going to hurt their business or affect them in a negative way. So we have to balance things very carefully here in the village. We have rules. We have a lot of companies in this village that do things that can be potentially very dangerous. But if they do it right, they can be good neighbors to you and never have any problem. But if we don't watch over them and make sure we work in the right way, we can have issues that affect your business, which we don't want to see happen. So we're very business oriented and we think like a business and that's what we want to do. So on behalf of the village, we want to thank you for being here. You see many of my board members here with us today. We've been around this a long time. 
I've been in my business for 30 some years. Um, this board's been together for 17, 18 years. We've pretty much have been the same board all along. So we know how to work with you, we know how to work together. And that's our goal, is to reach out to you. That's why you're here today, and we thank you for taking time for your business to be here today. We wanna let you know that we're here to work with you, we're here to reach out with you, and then anything we can do to help you, let us know. If you win, we win. When we win, everyone wins. And that's what we wanna see happen. So on behalf of the village, we wanna thank you for coming today, thank you for your time. And as Josh said, we're here to answer questions for you today. We got ears, we wanna use them with you. So I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Frank uh, Grisetta from the Chamber, I think, would also like to say a few words on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce. Thanks, Josh. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming out. And let me extend the welcome uh, to Elk Grove. And thank you for choosing Elk Grove to have your business here. Uh, I can speak from personal experience. Uh, my wife and I, uh, our residents and also business owners, we've had both of our businesses here in the village for many, many years. And uh, I joined the Chamber back in 2010 and joined the board in 2011, because I believe in uh, the business park here in Elk Grove. And, um, I relate the fact that the mayor is someone who understands that um, you know, having a strong business community helps everyone, uh, the residents, uh, and um, it's just great to have someone in leadership that can, uh, uh, that understands the business because coming from a business standpoint. Uh, we have a great chamber. We have a very large, we're one of the largest chambers here in our area. Uh, we have lots of events that you can partake in, doing tons of networking, uh, social events. Uh, we have a great beer and wine tasting. I think that's kind of our key <laughs> signature event that everyone likes every year. Um, so take advantage of those opportunities. Please come up to me afterwards and let's meet, let's talk, and let's talk to you more about the chamber. So again, thank you. Paul. Thanks, Frank. Uh, there's a couple of village resources I want to bring to your attention before we start with questions. Um, one of them is part is, is uh, the Elk Grove book. We just published this in June. Uh, there's uh, plenty of them on the table over there, so if you don't have one, please grab one on the way out. Um, the book uh, is full of information about the village, uh, the history of the village, uh, the uh, benefits of being, uh, having a business located in the village, but the real um, value of the book is that there's uh, profiles and stories of businesses that have been operating the village uh, for years and years and years, so it's really a great place to start learning about other businesses in the area and hopefully to start doing business with them. Uh, we want to promote uh, you know, businesses doing business with their neighbors. As the mayor said, this is the largest industrial park in the United States, uh, largest business park in the United States. So you can virtually get anything you need in Elk Grove Village. So we want to make sure that you're shopping local and supporting each other. Um, our second resource, uh, we just launched this the other day, uh, this EGV Biz Hub website. This is a website that's um, geared just for the business community. Uh, so you can log on to this website. Uh, you can create a profile of your business. Uh, to share with the other uh, the other members of the website. You can post information about your business. Uh, you can do a full profile on your company. It's not just a one line little listing. This is a, you know, a social media integration, photos, videos, whatever you want to put on there. Uh, and there's also information about state and county and local business development programs. There's a lot of resources out there from other agencies. We wanted to put it all on one website so people don't have to search and Google every you know, a million different resources. So it's really a valuable resource for, for the businesses. Um, if you're a manufacturer, I don't know if we have people who are manufacturers here, I know Sam, you're manufacturing. We have a, a manufacturing expo coming up in October. So if you're a manufacturing company, you can get a, uh, a booth, you know, a, a 10 by 10 booth to promote your services or your products. Uh, and we're promoting that expo to companies throughout the Midwest. So we have over 300 manufacturing companies from from the Milwaukee area to the Chicago area to the Hammond area, all coming into this to, to attend this event. And we have about over 80 companies in Elk Grove uh, that have uh, booths at this event to promote their, their products and services. So there's a lot going on in Elk Grove. A lot of it is geared to support the business community. As the mayor said, our goal is to be the most business friendly community in America. That means uh, you know, ask access to web tools, uh, access to events like the Expo to promote your company. We want to help you stay and grow here in Upper Village and uh, when you need to expand, come talk to me. I'll help you find a building uh, and other resources to make that move as easy, pos as, easy as possible. Um, having said that, this is really for you guys to ask questions. Um, we, like the mayor said, we have everyone in the room that, could, that you want, might want to talk to at the village. So please, if anyone has an experience, they moved in recently, or obviously you didn't move in recently, has an experience you want to talk about or ask questions, we're, we're here for you. Anybody? Dave, I know you just moved in. You want to ask, talk about your process? <coughs> uh, the moving in process, you mean? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm from Taco Associates. We're a large food company. 
we were in Skokie since 1961 and moved uh, in Elk Grove Village last year uh, over three, different, three separate moves. It, it went very smoothly, I would say. Every, the, the village is very accommodating. When I did have issues, I, I called up Josh and he was extremely helpful. Uh, you know, from a, a personal perspective and for the staff at, uh, at Taco, it was an extremely taxing experience in terms of long hours and so forth. I think anybody who's been through the process can, can relate through that. But it, it went very smoothly. Uh, initially, we were told by the experts that the, the whole process in terms of doing some renovation to the building and, uh, and moving in would take uh, a year to 18 months, and we did it in seven months. And uh, like I said, when I ran into any kind of issues, uh, that I thought of were related to the village, I, I reached uh, out to, to Josh and he was very helpful. So it was a smooth process, you know, uh, overall. I think everybody's very pleased. The uh, board of directors and the management, the senior management of Top Row are delighted to be here. It's a tremendous improvement over what we had in, uh, in Skokie. Did you let them know that uh, road construction is not annual thing here in the village? It's unusual. You move in, we get all this construction. Uh, so don't worry, that's, uh, that's not something that goes on all the time. Here. Yeah, well, we, we seem to get in before that happened. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're really delighted. It's a tremendous upgrade over the facility we had in Skokie. So we're, we're very happy to be there. And you're at Northwest Point, right? Yes. Yeah, that's very nice area there. Thank you. Um, any suggestions, maybe? Uh, maybe do improvements or ways we can change things to help the business company? Um, you know, I, I, I think we're, we're in the part of the association there in Northwest Point. Um, you know, it was uh, difficult for us initially to understand some of the rules and regulations of the association. Uh, we also have um, a committee, an act committee of employees, and they're very active and they ask a lot of questions. They were recently asking about uh, the bus stops uh, within the, uh, the park there and uh, how to make that more safe for the employees to be able to cross the roads and, and uh, get off the uh, buses and move about into the buildings. So we've been working uh, with the village to the association to try to understand uh, better what, what we can do to make improvements there. So the village has been working with you also? The, yes. The police yeah. department, I assume? And uh, I, I went through the association engineer who made contact with someone in the village and okay. uh, we got feedback through them. Okay, good. So it was very helpful. Thank you. And we appreciate coming. I know it's a very large company and uh, we're glad you chose Elk Grove. And yeah. all you folks, I know you can choose anywhere to go. I mean, we're in competition with other towns all the time trying to get businesses to come here. And um, like I say, we want to make sure we make it your choice, the white right one, after you made it here in Elk Grove. And we'll make sure you're, you're glad you did make the choice. So thank you. Appreciate that. Um, like I said, I was like I was talking to Josh earlier. Um, when we moved from 180 Martin Lane after 20 years to 2E Avenue, um, sure, we had roadblocks. What I hear from a contractor, oh, village is not doing this, oh, village is not giving permits, and village is not doing that, and I'm not gonna go out and people tend to see that, you know, they take advantage when it, says, when it comes to village. They said, oh, they're not gonna go out and find out what's going on. Where I just came down to the office and I met Donna the first time, and sure, he said, there's no permit. There's no permit given by a contractor. And sure, that solves the problem. Hey, you never never give a permit, that's the name of the project. So I started talking to Donna, uh, Ray, and uh, Gerald. Um, they needed what the information, uh, you know, they asked, I asked all the information they needed, submit everything. Sure, the uh, process started rolling faster than I expected. Within six months, we moved, instead of taking year and years, six months, we're ready to move in without any problem. The uh, village uh, built the uh, permit department helped us a lot. Well, I'm glad to get it. Well, one thing we're doing now, too, is it used to be, and I hope there's no contractors here, it used to be <coughs> that it was always a contract you had to rely on to pass the message from the village onto the owner that they're working with. That's why now we also not only tell the status to the contractor, we will tell the status to the owner, too. So you need to know as an owner that sometimes contractors are yanking the chain a little bit because they might be busy somewhere else and figure, hey, I'll blame the village and get this other job done before we come back to yours. And so we're trying to reach out to let the businesses know that, hey, here's what's going on. Your contractor came in and submitted this. We told you short this. We're still waiting for a response. Sometimes if we've had owners come and say, I didn't know that, Mayor. Thank you for telling me. My contractor's telling me it's the village fault. And really, it's like, yes, we try very hard. Mary's department does a phenomenal job. They, um, they work hard. We've got great inspectors. We've got great engineers. 
they know that time is money for you folks. Time is money. I'm a businessman. Time's my money. I don't want you wasting it if it doesn't have to be wasted. So that's why they will work fast with you, and that's why they'll let you know if there's something going on slow, we want to let the business owners know here's what's really happening so that you can get it going because we want to see you be successful. Is it something you started recently or is it from the last yeah, year? Yeah, it's something we just started picking up on and we want to do more of that. And so that's why sometimes contractors get nervous a little bit because we'll say, hey, okay, what's your contact information? By the way, what's the owner you're working for? Is con well, why do you want that? Well, we need to know that and we, we tell them. We want to keep them informed of what's going on too. Then all of a sudden you get a different contractor working for you. <laughs> yeah. And it goes, wait a minute, the guy's that paying my check knows what's going on. Okay, I better be, and that's good. That's what you want. People should be held accountable. Just like we want to be held accountable, everyone should be held accountable. And when they are, we come out ahead of them. Thank you. One of the uh, resource, or one of the um, topics that Congeal came up with our business is uh, Elk Grove is close enough so that we can bring people in from the city. Uh, to, to work with us uh, through public transportation. Uh, but once we get out here, it's not always, you know, well known the best route to get from our particular point A to point C, the city and back and forth and, and that sort of thing. So I was curious, uh, is there any sort of resources available? I mean, apart from, you know, map it out and pace or, you know, any sort of uh, ideas or special exceptions that you would make to try to allow for that that flow of uh, of employees that want to come from the city and work in Elk Grove. That's one of the biggest, probably the biggest problem we've had. Believe it or not, at one time we had a event or a project going on called the Star Line. That was going to have mass transportation from Rosemont, where it ends from Chicago, all the way out to Hoffman Estates. As a matter of fact, it was Elk Grove. Hoffman Estates, Schomburg, Rosemont, and Chicago were the first five communities that started the Star Line. It's got to be, what, 15, 16 years ago, right? The unfortunate thing is, for some reason, people that live in Chicago, and my oldest son lives there, they love mass transportation. They know how to hop the bus, they know the schedules, they know how to get on the L's, they know everywhere to go. It seems like when you cross that line from the city to the suburbs, the idea of mass transportation disappears like that. Well, we don't want to take a train, we don't want to take a bus, we don't want to take a bus. Well, you took it in Chicago? Yeah, but now we're in the suburbs, we're in a car. That's been one of our frustrations. However, we're very intimately involved with PACE. Matter of fact, there's a PACE stop right there in Northwest Point, close to your office there. Um, you need to let us know what your concerns are, what can help you, and we can work with PACE, and they will develop routes to meet businesses' need, provided there's enough ridership to support it. I mean, let's be honest, how many times you've sit around here whether I'll go or the suburb, you see a pace bus go by and there's one person on it at five o'clock. The prime time, you go in Chicago with a pack, out here there's one person on it. I hate to say it, that route doesn't last very long because it's dollars and cents. They're a business like anyone else, they can only afford it. Now they subsidize it to a degree, but it doesn't mean it can't be done. And what we need to do is work in conjunction with the businesses and show them, hey, we've got a pool of people that need to get from this area to this area. And the main thing I think we sometimes miss is they don't have to go all the way down to Chicago. Get them to the outskirts of Chicago and they've got a system already in place that they can tap to go in the city with. It's getting them from Chicago to the suburbs. So we're glad to work with you. Okay. And um, you know, if you have a point person that's gonna be assigned to it, mm -hmm. Josh is the ideal person to get it to. He'll get it to us, we can talk to Pace, and we can see if we can put something together. Um, Ray works a lot with the Pace uh, organization. I mean, their headquarters are a lot from the village. Um, and we'll try to make it happen. The hard part is, it's a suburban mindset. For some reason, when we're in the suburbs, all we think about is, I don't want a bus, I got a car, why would I do that? Or you go on, or even walk it. Well, the grocery store's a block away. I want to drive there. You know, it's a block, no, I'm gonna drive there. So, more we can do it, the better it is. And especially in this economy with the uh, cost of gas, and uh, it's tough times out there, it makes a lot of sense for people. So, we'll be glad to work with you. I can't, that's the one thing that's gonna be hard to help, to help you 100% on because, it's just tough to get people to do it. But we're seeing more of that. I know your company's got people, uh, a lot of companies have people come from Chicago. If we can get more of a, that idea of using mass transportation out here, it would help us. I, I, I guess it's just like you said, communication amongst the businesses. Yes. Saying we've got five here, you've got seven here. 
let's all meet three blocks down the road instead of one in front of each one of our place. And, and they do it in Chicago all the time. It does not stop for each one, but it stops every block or two. And people don't mind it. It's amazing. They get off the stand in the rain, the snow. It's okay. Come out in the suburbs. It's raining. <laughs> you know. So, but yeah, that's and we work with yeah, we work the chamber. Um, Cheryl, we work with the chamber. There's some uh, van share programs I know out there. I'll look and see if there's some information on that too that I can. Share. That would be great because I've heard of those where they they do meet somewhere and yeah. then get in vans and. <clears throat> okay, that's key. Think about it. 3,500 businesses within five square miles. That's a lot of potential partners, business partners, sales potential, all that. You don't need to leave the town. So that's why, and that's why one of the best things we did in the village here when we brought Josh up. Um, he used to be with DuPage County, and we are very glad we stole from DuPage County. And he's done a phenomenal job. And that's why don't be afraid to reach out. Josh is one of the best resources, but all of us, we're there for you. And you know, I used to be a teacher at one time, and I coached for a lot of years. I used to tell the kids and my athletes, there's no dumb question. The dumb part is not asking the question. So don't worry about asking questions. Even if it's something simple, if you don't know it, get an answer. The worst thing you can do is go wrong with misinformation. Misinformation ruins more things in this world than anyone could ever imagine. Get the right information. If you get the right information, usually it gets you a lot further along. So don't ever be afraid to reach out to us. And I'm telling this, I tell from business this. If you ever get any of our employees that treat you rudely, incorrectly, or don't do the job in a professional way, you let me know. We're proud of the fact that during this tough economy and over the years, we've never had to lay anybody off. But I tell my employees all the time, there could always be a first. And that's the way to lose your job, is not to work with our residents and businesses in a professional manner. Doesn't mean you have to say yes to them all the time, but you work in a professional manner, and you're timely in your response to it. The last thing I want to hear from any businesses, well, you know, Mayor, I left them five messages over the last five weeks. Trust me, that person won't be answering for much longer for the village. We want to work with you efficiently and make it as best way to achieve your goals as possible. And they know I'm serious on that. The good thing is, you will not see that with our village employees. They take great pride in what they do, and they really deliver for us. And that's why we're a great community. We're very successful. I mean, we're ranked always for housing, our, like I said, the department always won the highest awards because they appreciate what they can do for you because it comes back to them for them too. So don't be afraid to reach out to us. I think we had a, oh, I'm sorry. I was just say we had a couple people come in late. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm sorry? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Michael Bramrack from the Science Center in okay. uh, Chicago. Uh, we just moved into 20, excuse me, 2422 uh, Van Am Boulevard. We got back for uh, interior signage. For our special firms, uh, our biggest client is Carson Gary Scott. And we're just winding up all their interior Christmas signage. Great. We moved from uh, Skokie out here just two months ago. Yeah. We're getting a lot of Skokie. Yeah, we're getting this. like that. <laughs> Skokie wouldn't like to hear that. Brian? Yeah, I'm Brian O'Reilly. Um, moved in here in, I believe it was September of last year. Uh, I own a company called Quality Tools and Abrasives. We sell tooling and industrial supplies for manufacturing companies. Um, we moved all the way over from Benson <laughs> <laughs> Um And we're uh, very happy to be in Elk Grove. Well, as mentioned, it's nice that Brian said that. You know, we always hear, well, you know, you're in Cook County, Cook County. Here's a business that moved from DuPage County to Cook County. Um, there's a lot of benefits. I always tell businesses, don't just look at your property tax bill. There's a lot of other expenses to do business, water costs, um, fire ratings for your insurance costs, and so many other things, uh, quality and ease of doing your business, access to roads, and so on like that. Um, there's more than just what county your business located. Now, this gentleman's in a great location because he's in DuPage County, Oak Grove Village. He gets the best of both worlds. <laughs> but the nice thing about Oak Grove, and you'll be seeing soon, there's not going to be a full interchange put in at Elmhurst Road here in Oak Grove. That's something that goes back to Mayor Zedek. 35 years ago, we're just fighting to get that in there. We've got one on Arntine's Road, the new one coming on Elmer's Road. That's gonna help transportation, because the number one key I hear from businesses, time is money. Every minute my truck or my employee sits at a stoplight idling, that costs us money. So we're working very hard to help with transportation needs. That's why the work being done on Bussy Road we're thankful for. The full interchange at Elmer's Road, um, we're very grateful for it happening. And when the Elgin O'Hare gets completed and connection north and south, will help us immensely. 
Yeah, at it, it, Topco, we're going to be uh, updating our business continuity plan very soon, and was wondering if the village has any resources in the way of either supplemental power or alternate office site, uh, office uh, resources, uh, you know, things like that that would help in the process. Do, do we help with continuity plan development? We can, done. yes. And that, that's probably something we could actually uh, concentrate more effort in and bring folks together for those exact operations. Yes, so we would be very happy to talk with you further about that. Okay. And, and how you, not only how the village can work with you, but how you could work with each other in the event <coughs> that your physical plant is disrupted for some reason. Right. So, Rich, that's someone they should talk to you about? Sure. So, the fire chief will be available and give you the right resources. Ready? Thank you. Thanks. I have a question for you. I'm at 120 Turner, and it seems like that area has like been neglected. The sidewalks are all falling in and stuff. <coughs> it's a small business where people walk by and stuff. Is there a way to get the sidewalks fixed? Well, first off, um, that's the, an old area. So the man know. right there is there. 120 Turner, um, for people who don't know it, that's right there by um, Brown's, Chicken. <clears throat> Brown's Chicken. You got uh, Dairy Queen, the Pope's that's been sitting vacant for yeah. a long period of time, the bank that's been sitting vacant there for the a part of time. parking lots are terrible, mainly, like I say, to walk around on that turn. It's the, I walk down to the mailbox and it's like bad. The, the trees are coming down there from the ash borer and all that. Um, that location is actually an area that the village board has designated as an area we're looking to do a overview rehaul of that whole corner area, that quadrant we call it. Um, we're in total agreement. You got uh, office buildings right there. You got the shopping center and all that. In the meantime, Vito, head of our public works, will make sure we take care of the necessities to make sure you keep going in the meantime. But just so you know, your area is a targeted area the village has. Matt's shaking his head back there. That's one of the areas we've looked at, and it's going to be looked at for a investment of some sort from the village in the near future because um, right. you're exactly right because you got the strip shopping center there but and it's, it's filled it's funny because people say well it's filled it's filled but it's also an antiquated design the appearance of it and so on like that the strip shopping center on turner right where you're right over there same thing um so we're going to be looking at it's one of our near long-term projects it's going to be coming up and um, it needs to be improved i agree with you totally there's no disagreement on that however i apologize because we should not have any kind of unsafe situation in with this village. I apologize. I'll take responsibility for it, and I'll make sure Vito will get that response and be resolved very quickly. At least but, he had a sidewalk. So. Oh, no question about it. That should never happen, and I apologize for that. That'll be taken care of. But your area is one we're targeting because that's a prime entrance way. And as the old gentleman here gets going, Devon Avenue as a whole is going to become a prime corridor here in the village. We know that. We recognize that, and we're going to be addressing that. You gotta, I think it's a great location up there. I have a question, another question, and I understand why I probably can't, I cannot have it done, but being a small business in there, I'm the only, you know, self person, um, I'm hidden back there, and I want to put up some signs, I figure, I know you don't want a bunch of signs all over the place and make the world look bad, but is there a way of putting signs at corners I could put up, like, just say, a week and then take them down, you know, just to get some advertising to my area because I'm hidden back there? The problem we have with that, and my quick answer to you, and you won't like it, is no. Let me explain why. However, we'll find ways to help you get this really too. As I said, we're not punching it, but we're going to tell you why. We've got 3,500 businesses. If we let every business put signs up on the corner, that, that. It'd be, and how do I say yes to you as much as I'd like to, and then say no to him? Um, just like electronic signs. I get. I bet you once a week we have some business, can we put up electronic, put up, if we let every business put up electronic signs, we'd look like Las Vegas. Right. And that's what we're not trying to do. However, there should be ways we can help you get better visibility where your business is located to track you from Devon and Arnstein's Road. So let us have um, our staff, Josh, and we'll have Mary, engineering department, see ways we can maybe help you address your visibility issue and maybe ways to do something. Maybe something where you get several of your neighbors together to do a sign in a way that's more visible or something of that nature. So let us look at that for you and see what we can do. We want to thank you for taking your time out of your schedule today to come here and meet with us. Please don't make it a one-time thing. Um, it doesn't mean you have to join the chamber or anything like that, but we're around. Don't be afraid to reach out to us. Talk to us. We want to help you if we can. My staff is here for one reason, and that's to serve each and every one of you. So anything we can do, let us know. We'll take care of it. Keep me involved in what's going on, and we'll let you know if we come up with ideas for that quadrant. Uh, we'll let you know what's going on, because we want to get your input also. Thank you. Okay. Again, folks, thank you very much. And uh, we wish you well and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you.